G'day. Welcome to Chef's Favourite. My name's James Grass, and today we're at Como Tapria with Sean Layton. Sean's going to be showing us one of his favourite holiday cocktails. So Sean, what do we got today? When I think of Christmas time, um, Christmas Eve, I usually meet up with a friend or two and have a cheeky Guinness or two, and sometimes a whiskey. So I thought, why not make that somehow into a cocktail? So whiskey and Guinness together at last. Absolutely. And this is a Spanish joint, so there is some PX sherry in there as well. I and there's an egg less. in there for some protein. Okay. So yeah, it's some good times. Is there gonna be anchovies in there? No. <laughs> Olives? No, but we could put it on the side maybe. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you get started on the cocktail. I'll see you on the other side of the bar. Thank you. We're gonna start with a full egg. No need to separate the whites and the yolks. Always do the egg first, because if you mess up, you haven't wasted all that booze. Pro tip, ounce and a half of your favorite Irish whiskey. In this sense, I'm using Jameson Black Barrel. Three quarters of an ounce of PX Sherry. So this is a quite a, a sweeter sherry. And this is gonna give you sweetness and mouthfeel. A lot of sherries are really dry. This one is quite sweet. Some heavy cream, so you're gonna do half an ounce. Now for the fun part, we're gonna add some Guinness. So around the holiday time, definitely a lot of Guinnesses are had. Guinness, sorry, plural. And generally we head down to the Irish Heather, have a Guinness and a whiskey. So I thought, why not make it a new drink? Two ounces and a little bit more of Guinness. And now we're gonna dry shake that first. That'll kind of emulsify the egg white, the cream, etc. So no ice in your shaker and just give it a nice little shake just to aerate it. Now we're gonna add some ice. Give it a good hard shake. Kind of want to make it look like a Guinness, so we found the perfect glass. Leave it to settle for a second, just like you would a Guinness before you drink it. A little bit of nutmeg on top. You could substitute that for cinnamon or another hard spice if you like, but nutmeg's the way to go. And there you have it. Cheeky nutmeg. Mate, Good this, looks, this looks amazing. The old cheeky nutmeg. That's right. Cheers, mate. Cheers. What? Tastes like Christmas, right? Wow. You'd think it'd be really sweet. It's not. It's not sweet at all. It's light. But then you've got that nutmeg that just kind of aromatics of it. It's kind of like a meal, too. Guinness is really a breakfast food. So Sean, I want to ask you a little bit about you. Are you a Vancouver guy? Yeah, born and raised. Born and raised. There's not many of us. I was going to say, you're a bit of a unicorn like that. I am. Wow. Yeah, I grew up on the North Shore and basically lived here my whole life. I lived in the city for the majority of my life, but grew up on the North Shore. Got it. You're one of my favorite bartenders in the city, not to oh, pump your ties, but you are. I remember back in the day, I would come through with my colleagues from the Vancouver Club and we would order bourbon sours, you know, after a long day at work. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the places that you've worked in your journey here in Vancouver. Oh yeah, so start off at the keg. From there I worked at a few different restaurants, but I think most impactful one after that was uh, George in Yaletown, uh, which is RIP. Oh, um, yeah. But that was like the cocktail bar of cocktail bars, probably in the country at the time. Really? Oh yeah, it was massive. Like, was that the it was one really that was next small. to Pino's? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which is now bricks and mortar. But it was a great cocktail bar, it was very fast paced. They were probably like, I didn't open there, but I was there right after Nick Devine was the opening bartender. Got it. Did an amazing job. And kind of, I think that was one of the pioneering places of the city. You know, that was around basically when like Shambar was around, like yeah. those days, like when it first started. Yeah. Uh, and it was awesome. It was very busy, very, very high volume bar. Wow. We had a crazy team of people who are now in the city that like Keenan Hood from Kiefer, Bryant Mao from Foxworth Days, yeah. John Smolinski, list goes on. Well, wow, that's quite an all-star cast. It was an amazing team. Fun times, it was very interesting too, because it was kind of like night, half nightclub, half cocktail yeah. bar. So it was it's like kind of like the Harlem Globetrotters of bartending. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, except not as tall, <laughs> except for John. <laughs> he'd, be play, he'd be playing center. Yeah. He's center for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably be, I'd, I'd be like maybe a shooting guard. Shooting guard, you reckon? Yeah. Train them. All right. Okay. So we went from George, and then did you go to Labattoir straight? Yeah. So after George, sorry, um, I worked there for the Olympics, which was awesome. Wasn't um, it? I was at George for maybe a few years, and then went and opened Labattoir, which was an amazing. Um, you know, I'd done my volume and my 
cocktail aspect of things, but that really got me into food and restaurants. Once again, an amazing crew of people. Yeah. Amazing opening to be a part of. Mm -hmm. I was there for three or four years. And when I was there, I started doing consulting as well. Mm. So I was doing stuff on the side and doing a lot of openings. So since then, I'd been a part of over 24 bar openings. Actually? Yeah, before I opened here. Yeah. Wow. So that was really fun and lots of different experiences and met 24. Lots of <laughs> that seems, In certain ways, that some seems ways it was stressful. Just doing a little bar program, some things it was like helping with everything, but mm. I love it. It's mm. fun. What do you reckon is the rowdiest thing that you've come across in the way on the way to an opening, like permitting wise or? Uh, I did one that was in um, St. John, Newfoundland, and I was actually stuck on the island for like two days, and I was trying to get back to service at Labattoir. Was it Fogo? Um, was it no, Fogo no, it wasn't Fogo. It was like a 400 seat restaurant. Oh wow! Yeah, I was training. 65 bartenders, I think. And when you were at Labattoir, you had a bit of an all-star crew there as well. Paul Kronberg was running the door, Yeah, PG, Romano, yeah. Like Robert Herman. We had Jake all -star kitchen on the wine team. Yeah. Um, as for the kitchen crew, like all those people that were there now are all either running their own kitchens or yeah. at amazing places around the world. Yeah. So yeah, all around, just amazing crew. Cool. Yeah, since then, did a few other openings and then started doing the Spanish place Okay, so here. let's talk about Como. Okay. Spanish. Are you Spanish? No. 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 But, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Spain and a huge fan of Spanish football and food and culture. And, okay. yeah, it's probably my favorite country in the world. Got it. So then that makes sense as to why you would open a uh, Spanish yes. tapas restaurant. Yes. The R&D trips are really hard and they suck. Mm. Traveling to Spain is You really know what? God, you committed. <laughs> <laughs> committed to your craft. But, we, yeah, we like to go all the time. Yeah. And keep refreshed and keep inspired. No doubt. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with just hanging out in Spain for a week, eating and drinking. If you ever need somebody to carry the bags. I got you. Ready. Okay. So Como has been open for how long? We have been open for almost four years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This time flies when you're having fun, hey? It does. You know, and it's like, obviously there was a couple of years of weirdness there. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily feel like four, but right. it's almost four. Yeah. And we're standing at the bar. We are. Which is a stand-up bar. It is. Which is something that happens in Spain, right? Everywhere. Yeah. It's just like second nature to go into a bar and stand. Yeah. And if you see a spot, you just go there, you order a sherry, you get a tapa, you don't, you know, line up and ask to talk to the hostess or have a reservation. You just go and you stand it. You see a spot, you go there. You fill the gap. And you kind of bounce around and you hit, you know, five or six places. Right. And you stand, you have a little snack, you have a drink, and yeah. you're on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's Because this a fun is pretty time. unique for Vancouver, hey? It is very unique for Vancouver. Mm. I mean, we're definitely the first people to do the whole standing thing. Um, I think there might be a few places around town that maybe yeah. still do are doing it now, but... Um, I love it. It's awesome. People I love, love it. it. Um, we generally, like, early on we keep it standing, and then later on we may put some seats out if people want to have sit down and have right. dinner. Um, but there's all different experiences in the restaurant. There's this bar, we have a kitchen bar, we have low top seating, high top seating. It's a very social place. Yeah. It's very, like, it's, it's not spacious. Yeah. But no, that's it's... the way it's meant to be. You're supposed to talk to your neighbors, try things. Yeah. You know, feel a little bit uncomfortable almost, but it's like once you're once you're there, you're having a good time. It's a very Vancouver thing to feel uncomfortable meeting yeah. strangers, but <laughs> I love that you're going about it and trying to make Vancouver more fun and more friendly. I think it's great. Thanks. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you got to make people feel really uncomfortable to f take a risk, and then they're and, like, "I love it," and, and then I'm they like, feel I told comfortable, you. and then they feel you know, comfortable. Ten minutes, twenty minutes later, like we're gonna stay at this spot. I'm like, "Yeah, goddamn right you are." Yeah, this is the spot, <laughs> and here we are. Here we are. So. One of the other things I like to ask about is your favorite places around the okay. city. So you're in the, in, the, in the beverage side of things. Do you have mm -hmm. a favorite distillery in Vancouver? Gins. I love the London Dry from Long Table. Mm. There's also a new one in North Van that just opened called Copper Penny. They're making amazing gins and they have a, they have a triple sec called Just a Sec. Uh, uh, it's down, uh -huh. yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's uh, pretty good, I like it. It's that great, one. they're making awesome stuff. They're located in the little brewery district in Lower Lonsdale. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would definitely hit them up. It's a great little tasting room and they're right by, you know, four other great breweries. So on that note, favorite brewery in Vancouver? Favorite brewery, Brass Neck. Wow. Um, we, Straight at it, knew the answer. Well, we, we loved this neighborhood when we were looking around for locations and we were also, we went to Brass Neck quite a bit and I just knew that this neighborhood and especially this little corner mm. was where we wanted to be. And so even before we opened, we knew this was a great spot 
And we knew it was a great spot because we were really close to Brass Neck. Sure. So I just think that they keep it, you know, they keep it real. The staff are always great. They don't necessarily follow the trends that everyone else is doing. They stick to their guns and they're some of the best beer in the city. Brass Neck. Yeah. Sounds like I know where I'm going for a pint after this. <laughs> All right. You mentioned this neighborhood. Yeah. Really cool neighborhood. We're on Main and 7th. Yes. In Vancouver, Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Who are some of the neighbors that we should know about here? So you got Bar Susu just down the block. It used cool. to be the Whip. Awesome team again. Great food, fun little wine bar. Um, AJ's is where AJ's I'm Pizza. Best in the city. We also got Main Street Brewing just down the block yeah. here, which is you know more friends of ours as well. Yeah. And you got a new spot going across the street called Courtside, um, which is a basketball bar. They are just about to open, and they're good buddies of ours as well. Oh, amazing! Yeah. That's this, uh, this neighborhood's amazing. That's exciting. Lots of good stuff in this area. Let me ask you about your favorite hangover brunch venue. If you're going somewhere, you got a little hangover, you've had a couple of these cheeky nutmegs. Hmm. Well, I'm not a brunch guy. You're not a brunch guy? No. But I do enjoy a hangover lunch, um, which I think I would go a nice bowl of pho. So, Seat Saigon on Hastings, oh. kind of Hastings Sunrise area. Yeah. Um, it's my favorite in the city, and if I'm either hungover or maybe feel like a cold coming on, that's what I'll go hit. And what are you ordering? Believe it or not, I order the grilled chicken. Usually I'm a beef bow guy or some of like the weird stuff, but their chicken is so good. And every time I go, I tell myself not to order an egg roll as well, but I do. Then you just feel like, oh fuck, just that like, was too much. Whoa. Yeah. So yeah, I think like if I'm not feeling the best, that's my move. Got it. I have one more question for you. Okay. You have to have your final meal on earth before we shoot you into space and you're gonna be opening a new cocktail bar on Mars and you're never coming back. <laughs> on Mars, okay. I'd like to know what is your last meal and the last cocktail that you would have before Ooh. you go? Well, if it was Vancouver, I would just eat like four portions of cheese toast at Highs. But. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Highs. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yes, uh, if it were a anywhere in the world, uh, there's a bar called El Zampagnette in Barcelona. It's yeah. a stand-up style bar and they've got a case like ours full of cool tapas but you don't even see the kitchen there and the stuff coming out of that kitchen is incredible um they have like a iberical pork secreto that they serve with shishito peppers Yum. and like a butifara sausage amazing a what sausage butifara it's sort of like a it's almost like a english banger in a sense okay but it's spanish and so, so good. spanish banger yeah oh it's so good. like any anything from that restaurant cool. um and they're obviously if you're in Spain, you have to eat some some shrimp. Some shrimp. All the shrimp and some anchovies. Got it. And then what's the cocktail going with that? I'd probably just drink some sherry, like some delicious fino, maybe like an Anrama, so something really fresh and unfiltered, and probably a little glass of Estrella. Just simple. Estrella. If, if I have to have a cocktail, it'd be a simple gin tonic. Sounds like we're going to get you pretty hammered before you shoot you off into space, eh? Yeah, I think that's, I, I, you know, flying is hard enough. Space travel take probably the edge be harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, thank you so much. Cheers, yes. mate. I appreciate you, you hosting Thanks, us chef. today. Chef's favorite, Sean Layton, Como Taparia. Share, like, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. Come and have some tapas with Sean and the team here. It's a good time. <laughs>